So Midjourney 7 is out and it's an extremely powerful tool for architecture. This is a Midjourney 7 beginner tutorial for architecture. Here is the outline of what we'll go over and I have the video timestamp so you can jump around if you'd like. Remember to hang out until the end of the video because I'll show you a special trick only Midjourney professionals know. Let's jump right in. Head over to midjourney.com. Click sign up and click continue with Google. Select which account you would like to sign into Midjourney with. On the Midjourney homepage, you can see images that other people have created. On the left hand side, you'll have different categories to choose from explore, create, edit, personalize, organize, chat, and tax. Head to the bottom. Click the three dots next to my account and select Manage Subscription. With Midjourney, you have four different plans that you can choose from. Basic, Standard, Pro Plan, and Mega Plan. If this is just a one-off for you, I would try the Basic Plan, but if you're going to be using Midjourney more than once or twice a week, I would suggest doing the Standard Plan. Choose which plan you would like to go with, and after you've signed up and paid for it, meet me back over at the Create page. This is where you're going to create all your images. At the top, you can see we have a search bar here, or what looks like a search bar. This is actually where you're going to enter in your prompts for Midjourney. A prompt is a text input that instructs Midjourney on what to create. Let's start with very simple, like Zaha Hadid style house on the side of an ocean cliff, and then hit enter. Slowly, the images are gonna to come to life, Right here, you can see we're at 55% and it's slowly loading. The hardest part about writing a good prompt is knowing what you want. Available to patrons and linked in the description below is the Midjourney Cheat Sheet. It's a complete Midjourney reference guide that's made specifically for architecture. Anytime you enter in a prompt, Midjourney is gonna create four images for you to choose from. This is because Midjourney AI is pretty random and it wants to give you a different selection. I actually like this first one the most, so I'm gonna click into it. If you hover over the image, you'll see that your cursor turns into a plus sign. If you click, it'll zoom in. And if you click outside the image, it'll zoom out. You can also get out of this image completely by clicking this X. If you'd like to download any image that you created, you simply click it. And on the top right, you have a download option. On the bottom right hand side, you can see that we have different creative actions to work with. If you don't see all of these, click more options and then make sure all of the options are selected. We're gonna go through these one by one because they're very important to know. When you hover over each creative action, it'll tell you what each one does. Let's start with Vary. Vary makes images similar to this one with slight changes. If you click Subtle, it'll make minor changes to the image, and if you click Strong, it makes broader changes to the image. Let's see what happens when we click Strong. This is the output from the Strong variation. The upscale creative action will create a larger version of the image. This is ideal for sharing, saving, or printing. At the end, if you find an image that you really like, you should always upscale it so that it's at a higher resolution. If you click the subtle option, it'll enlarge without significantly altering the image. But if you click creative, it increases the size of the image while adding subtle improvements for a more polished look. I haven't really noticed a big difference between the two, but Creative does add small improvements that I usually like. Let's go with Creative and see what happens. This is the original, and now this is the Creative Upscaled version. You can see it's a larger image and it's more polished. The Remix Creative option will build upon this image by creating similar ones with a new or updated prompt. This is a prompt that you will enter in yourself. Subtle makes smaller differences and strong will make larger differences if you want to move into a new direction. If you click strong, you can see that it adds this image up into the images prompt, and it also re-enters in the text prompt that you had sent earlier. I want to add some people into this image. So I'm going to add in a period, people walking around, period. And I also want birds in the sky, birds flying in the sky, and then press enter. Now let's do the same thing with the subtle option for remix. Period, people walking around, birds in the sky. Then press enter. When we use remix subtle, it keeps the original image more or less intact. 
When we go with Remix Strong, it'll keep the overall characteristics of the original image, but it will change it more. The pan creative action will create wider or taller images by adding extra content in a specified direction. Whichever direction that you click is where it'll add to the image. So if you want to add more to the top of the image, click the up arrow. If you want to add more to the bottom, click the down arrow. The same goes for left and right. I want to add a little bit more to the right of the image, so let's click the right arrow. It looks like it added a little bit more to the right side of the image, showing us more of the ocean and a cliff in the background. You'll also notice that it made the image more landscape. The zoom creation action creates a new image with extra context around the outside of the original. If you click 1.5, it'll expand the image 1.5 times its size. And if you click two times, it'll expand it two times its size. Let's click both and see what we get. So the zoom command is pretty straightforward. It's as if you can zoom out 1.5 times or two times the original image. At the bottom are more actions that you can do. The one that we want to worry about right now is a rerun action. If you click rerun, it'll rerun your original prompt, but it will always spit out new images. With rerun, I always tend to run it about three or four different times, just so I have more images to select from. Midjourney actually allows you to run multiple different prompts at the same time. This is great so that you have more images to choose from in the end. These are all the images that I got from the rerun command. Now let's learn a little bit more about the settings located on our prompt bar. After you click settings, you'll see that three categories pop up, image size, aesthetics, and model. Under image size, you can change the aspect ratio of your image. You can go with the default options of portrait, or landscape, or you can use this slider to select the option yourself. Under the aesthetics category, you have three different sliders, stylization, weirdness, and variety. Stylization influences how strongly the mid-journey aesthetic is applied. Low stylization values produce images that closely match the prompt, but are less artistic. I'm gonna enter in the same prompt that we had earlier, Zaha Hadid style house located on a cliff side. This time I'm going to make it more of a sunny day. Let's see what happens when I pull the stylization slider all the way to the left, and then let's see what happens when I pull it all the way to the right. This is an option that I typically leave at around 100 to 150 because I don't want Midjourney to mess around with my prompt too much. I want it to do exactly what I'm saying. If Midjourney doesn't create an image that I like, I then adjust my prompt rather than adjusting the stylization factor. The next slider is weirdness. It introduces quirky qualities into your generated images. This one I also typically keep all the way off, but let's see what happens when I do it both ways. With the weirdness slider all the way up, it's obvious that Midjourney introduces a lot of these different elements that weren't originally in our prompt. Maybe this is something that you would use if you didn't know exactly what you wanted and you wanted Midjourney to put out a lot of different options for you, so maybe you can get some inspiration. Variety is the last slider available in the aesthetics category. Variety influences how varied the images are. High values will produce more unusual and unexpected results but let's see what happens when we have it set at zero and then all the way up. Variety again is an option that I don't typically use unless I want Midjourney to create some inspirational images for me to give me some ideas if I don't really know what I want just yet. So I'm gonna move these back over to 100, zero, and zero. On the right hand side, we have the model category. Mode, raw mode replaces the default aesthetic of some Midjourney model versions. Typically, I keep this option on standard. I haven't noticed much of a difference with raw. Version is where you can choose which version of Midjourney you want to use. Different Midjourney versions have different effects that it can add to your image. For now, I'm going to keep it on 7. You can play around with the different model versions if you'd like. Also, if you switch over to Draft, it'll create the images more quickly, but they won't be as high quality. I typically leave this on standard as well because I have one of the more upgraded plans for Midjourney. And last but not least is Speed. You can put it on Relaxed, Fast, or Turbo. Turbo will create the images more quickly. I typically leave mine on fast because I have quite a few fast hours with my mid-journey plan and then relaxed. After you run out of fast hours with your mid-journey plan, it's going to force you to move over to the relaxed option. Next, let's head over to the edit tab on the left hand side. On the top left, you'll see a retexture tab. Let's go into there. If you already have an image that you've tried to edit, you can click new up here or you can do edit from URL or edit uploaded image. 
Let's do edit uploaded image. This is an image that I created earlier using Midjourney. It's an architectural site plan that I told Midjourney to create in the style like it was hand drawn. So what retexture does is it retains the original images shape and form, but you can add more stylized elements to it. For example, in the prompt, I'm going to type in watercolor site plan. On the right hand side, you could see the four images that it's going to put out one, two, three, and four. If you'd like to download these, you can go down to download image at the bottom right. Let's try something else with the original image. Let's try futuristic site plan with people walking around. Another really powerful thing that Midjourney's retexture tool can do is it can turn a complete rudimentary sketch into a very nice architectural image with colors and atmosphere and everything of the like. Head over to edit uploaded image, click your sketch or image of the sketch that you made and open it. And now the sketch is uploaded into Midjourney. Head over to the retexture tab, click it, and let's bring this sketch to life. Architectural rendering, photo realistic, hyper realistic, high quality, bright sunny day, urban architecture, photograph, concrete walls with clear glazing, and soft wood materials to bring the building to life. Add a pop of yellow color and press enter. This was my original sketch and these are the four images that it created using the retexture tool. It brought the sketch to life. Sometimes Midjourney doesn't do the best job of adding people into your image, and then it's up to you to Photoshop them in yourself. A render without people is dull and lifeless. When you create them in Midjourney, you still have to remove the background yourself. This process works well, but it's tedious, and that is why I went ahead and created a massive pack of over 500 cutout people with transparent backgrounds. They are also in a PNG file format. Head over to the link in the description and use the promo code YouTube to save some money. This pack is also available and free to all Patreon members. Like the video, please like the video and subscribe down below if you want to see future content just like this. Check out those two videos over there. I think you'll really enjoy them. And if you want to support the channel further, check out the Patreon. You get a lot of great architecture related benefits and your name gets featured in the videos.